has to be one of the best quartz divers on the market. All around her, I think it's hard to beat this Seiko Tuna. The SBBN versions are my favorite. This one in particular, the SBBN 033. There are some reviews already on this. Obviously, this is Bruce's watch. Um, but if you look back a little ways before, um, actually before I started doing videos, I had one of these 033s and I loaned it to both, if any of you guys remember uh, CG channel, um, I loaned it to her, she did a review on it, and I loaned it to Bruce, and Bruce did a um, couple of vids on it, and both of them really liked it, as I knew they would, that's why I wanted to get it out there, I wanted other people to see it, that's why we do these videos mostly, just in case you guys are wondering, um, but I, honestly this is probably one of the coolest dive watches out there in my opinion, and then you know, some people don't have that uh, intimate connection with the non-mechanical movements um, once you go into the quartz movements. But when you get into some of the higher-end quartz movements, like the one developed for this watch by Seiko, this is the 7C46. Um, and they have some earlier versions of a similar movement, but they're not interchangeable like the... Uh, well, I mean, I'm not going to get into that too too in depth, but there's a bunch of other really good high end quartz movements made by Seiko that are serviceable and they they're you know um, repairable and they have longevity on them and they have accuracy on them and all the while they're actually pretty affordable too. So that's what makes uh, all these nicer quartz Seiko dive watches really cool. And then this one's you know really well constructed and deceiving size wise um i didn't actually measure it for the video so we'll just do it real quick um i mean it's a, it's essentially round you know but you're looking at you know to the edge which actually has like a taper to it you know 47 and a half but i mean it has like this angle to it so it's actually a little narrower up here like so for example if you were to measure just the uh the bezel itself is only 40 almost 41 so, and, I, and honestly, I don't want to say it wears like a 41, but it certainly doesn't wear like a 47 or a 46. Um, and that was what, even when I purchased it back in the day, I was worried because I was already wearing the Seiko Monster at the time. And um, if you look at it, and I'll give you a lug-to-lug -lug measurement here in a little bit, but if you look at, um, let's see if I can get these so you can see them, the thickness and the and the lug-to-lug -lug and everything is... Um, I mean, the lug-to-lug -lug on the, t the Tuna is actually shorter than on the Monster. In thickness, I mean, we'll just get, we'll show you the numbers. The lug-to-lug -lug on this, which, I mean, it has lugs. I mean, it's, they are actually there. You're looking at uh, about 44 and a half-ish. And they are the little, little drilled lugs. The thickness, um, see if I can try to capture it without the dome. I mean, you're looking at like 13.3 without the dome. Uh, if you capture it like with the dome crystal, you're looking at just over 15 and a half. You know, the lug to lug on a monster is like, I should know the monster measurements by heart, but I don't, like 47. And then the uh, thickness is, the monster's thinner. But, you know, that's what's great about it. But the two, I'm gonna throw it on my wrist. Let's, let's check it out. So you guys can see, I mean, you guys know what, watches look like on my wrist but it a classic Seiko I mean it's they can do a larger watch and this one does not wear I mean if you can wear an SKX or a Monster you can wear one of these like and it would be comfortable it won't feel too big it really won't um so if you if you want what I think is probably the best available like brand new high-end in my opinion, high-end quartz because of the price and everything. These are about $1,000 new. If you watch the used market, you can probably snag one, you know, $650 to $800 right in there somewhere. They do drop in value. They don't stay up there. Um, if you get into some limited ones, they, like they made a patty one that actually has a blue anodized um, bezel and then the different handset and stuff like that. I haven't tracked those. Those actually might be going up before I forget. I have to show you this. The Loom 
and I didn't charge it. Maybe I'll charge it so I can really blow your mind. The loom on the SBBN Tuna is nuclear. I mean, it is insane. It is, it is brighter than the Monster. Like, every day that you could try it, it is straight up brighter than the Monster. Like, hopefully you're seeing that in video. Like, you, you cannot beat the loom. I mean, there's probably... I don't know, I've had a lot of watches, and I can think of one watch, which nobody in the watch circle that, you know, I pretty much talk to would even probably try one. But if you look at the Reactor Never Dark series, those actually have probably as bright or maybe even brighter loom than these but I haven't had one next to it so I don't know but I have owned one of those and they are crazy bright so just a great value it does not come in this bracelet this is a strap code and mill or something which seems to work pretty good you know Jeffrey McMahon recommended this and then Bruce also did it uh, this one has the prospects uh, PS on the crown the bezel action on this is super tight and I mean, just what you would expect from a watch at this price point. The um, seconds hand hits the marks dead on, and it snaps. Like, it doesn't... I mean, there's there's some other ones that do it really well, but with these high-torque mortars and these movements, it, like, just locks into place, so it doesn't bounce at all. And I want to show you... I brought up a picture, just so you guys can understand, because I'm not going to open up this one because it's not my watch, but show you on the iPad here so you can see what the quartz movement looks in these looks like in these and you can tell like that's like more modular type thing so if you move the battery out of the way you pop those screws out I'm pretty sure like servicing you can actually just take that whole piece right out like it's I think it, it would be fairly easy to work on um, again like I said I haven't done it I've never worked on one of these but it looks like it was built for longevity and accuracy in mind and then it's not of the same, I mean, but you can look at the similarities. So that's the uh, 7C46, which that's the movement that's in the tuna. But for example, if you look at like, again, this is a much better quartz movement, but this is the 9F6. This is like what you see in a Grand Seiko. Um, it's, you know, just a little more, a lot more detailing and and um, build quality and everything. And I, I don't know much about these movements either, but... I have to believe that they're kind of related. And you get into some of these quartz movements and some of them are like, they're, I don't know, I think it's really cool. And there's other brands out there too that have messed with it. You know, there's a Grand Seiko. Well, most of these are Seiko on this. But, I mean, you guys, you kind of get what I'm saying, right? You know, it's not, it's not a cheap quartz movement. It's not something you can just go on Esslinger or one of those supply houses and just buy a, a, a a replacement for it like they're expensive they're manufactured specifically and they're done at higher standards so that's a quick look you know um there it is I'll show you it next to a couple other but the main thing is is how deceiving it is i think a lot of people are worried that it's um it's gonna wear too big and uh, it doesn't it is i didn't get a weight on it i'll probably edit in weight on it because it is probably it is probably closer to the, like this turtle if i'm just going off from feel it is probably closer to the weight of this turtle with the uh, strap coat end mill you know if you're pulling off a turtle you're easily going to pull off one of these and the same thing with like a sumo i mean the sumo wears and wraps around the wrist really good but the um the tuna with that short leg to leg just wears phenomenal and it i guess i don't know what else i could say about it you guys are interested in trying one maybe uh, snag up a used one because it's whatever marks and stuff are going to be on it that's it i mean you're not gonna the, the movement's great and the battery lasts a few years you just swap in a new one so there you go